Okay, folks. Well, it's been a week since I put up the Q&A video on my YouTube channel. So that means that the time for asking questions is now officially over. Uh, oddly enough, I didn't get that many questions. So uh, that means that to those who did participate, that means I'm going to be able to give uh, a little bit more of an elaborate answer uh, to the questions that you asked. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and get the questions answered. Uh, the first set of questions came from uh, my subscriber known as the Infinity Paradox. Question one, how long have you been a Tron fan? Well, here's a story on that. Uh, oddly enough, I was a Tron fan before it even hit theaters. One of the radio stations in my hometown uh, used the Lisberger animation that was uh, featured on the second disc of the 2002 DVD of Tron as well as the more recent Blu-ray release uh, that's now being called Tron, the original classic. Uh, gosh, let me think. I think I was probably about 11 at the time when that commercial came out. Uh, but uh, I didn't know at the time that uh, Steven Lisberger was the creative genius behind it until I saw it featured on the uh, DVD release uh, back in 2002. So you can imagine my surprise about uh, upon finding out that uh, Steven Lisberger was the creative genius behind that, and seeing that animation again after so many years was really a treat, because I never really thought I'd ever see it again. Now, if you haven't seen it, um, you can find it fairly easily on YouTube if you want to see it. Um, Unless, of course, you've got the uh, 2002 DVD release of Tron or the Blu-ray of it. Uh, I think it's still as neat to watch today as it was when it first came out. And to be honest with you, I think it's held up pretty well for uh, almost being 30 years old now. Boy, I sound old. <laughs> okay, question two. Uh, why do you love it? Well, here's a, th here's a story. Um, I love Tron because it holds that really nostalgic value of the 80s arcade boom uh, when games like Pac-Man were all the rage. For me, Tron is like being inside a video game of that time period. And yes, uh, the special effects are by today's standards outdated and even, you could say, hokey. But, um, even so, it still rekindles fond childhood memories of those days uh, of early computing before Bill Gates and the Internet became household names. All right. Thank you very much, The Infinity Paradox, for those questions. Uh, the second set of questions came, comes from uh, my subscriber and friend, End of Line Reviews. Uh, question one. If there was a Tron 3, who would you think could handle the Neutron license. I honestly don't think that Spin Master would be chosen due to some fans dubbing their work on the three and three quarter inch figures as really shoddy. All right. Um, let's see. Well, I agree with you. It definitely shouldn't be Spin Master because you are well aware of the quality control issues that really plagued the entire Tron Legacy line. Uh, if uh, I'm sure you're aware that uh, many videos on YouTube really show quite, quite well uh, the lack of quality control. And honestly, I think a company that's worth its salt uh, won't have that occurring on a constant basis. Uh, it's, I think it's really disgraceful that the quality control issues went, went on as long as they did. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons that explain the overall lack of sales on their Tron Legacy line of products, uh, in spite of the neat gimmicks, uh, like the impulse projection and the light up features on the core figures and vehicles and, uh, whatever other features the deluxe figures, uh, have. Uh, if I had a choice, uh, gosh, I, I think I'd like Hasbro to get it. 
Um, I really like the work they've done on their recent Star Wars figures that I've seen in stores like Walmart. And I'll be honest with you, seeing the the recent card backs uh, with uh, the old Kenner logos on them, that really kind of takes me back to when I was collecting uh, the vintage figures when I was about seven or eight when Star Wars first came out. Um, another reason that I think Hasbro should get it is because they recognize mistakes and they correct them. Uh, I was glad that Hasbro to see that Hasbro did away with that battle action feature on some of their Star Wars figures that were out oh, five plus years ago. I really thought it was just silly and... It stopped me from getting more Revenge of the Sith figures than I did when they first came out in 2005. So I'm sure you can probably tell that I'm really not a serious toy collector. And uh, the Tron Legacy products that I bought, they were the first that I've gotten since Revenge of the Sith came out back in 2005. So, all right, question two. Do you want... Any other Tron memorabilia other than legacy figures, the DVD, Blu-rays, etc., that you would be willing to review for us? Well, I'm not sure what do you want any other Tron memorabilia means. Is it time for the Sentry to rectify you? <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Uh, okay, if you meant Owning Tron memorabilia, the answer is no. I, I don't anymore. Uh, all the vintage Tron items that I used to own were unfortunately lost. Uh, they burned up in a storage building fire years ago, along with a lot of vintage software that is really quite collectible now. And trust me, I was really teed off that that, that incident occurred. It was just ridiculous. So, eh. Uh, I know the vintage Tron stuff pops up on eBay from time to time, uh, but here's the story. I stopped using eBay years ago when they changed their policy to force sellers to take PayPal instead of money orders. Uh, I've had bad experiences occur using PayPal in the past, and I, ref I really don't care to get involved with them ever again. Uh, that's why I call eBay screw bay, uh, whenever I post on sites like tronsector.com. Okay. So I'd like to thank once again, the infinity paradox and end of line reviews, uh, for their questions. And on that note, take care and stay tuned for my next review. Have a good one.